Yes, you know what time it is. Tally Ho Dead Champions XBS 15 7590 Gaming Review Time. So this comes with Windows 10 Home. What the luck? Come on. Let's get rid of that Windows Home. Let's get some Windows Pro. Copy and paste my code from the description. You can also get Office 2019. Just paste my code. Woof. It's Windows Pro time. All right, so if you're not around here, come on, sub up, join the wood train, everything you want to know about this XBS 15 compared to MacBook Pro, everything you want to know. Let me know a question down there in the comments if you got it. It's fair to say, last day and a half I've been smashing this thing, and I know its limits, I know its limits. So let's find out if it can game. Just a quick, yeah, compared to last year, or last model 9570, not a big difference. A single figure improvement would be in percentage, if you want to know. You know, I class this XPS 15 and the last one as 60 FPS medium to high settings. And I still class this one here the same. So nothing's really changed in that regard. Small incremental improvement. That's more to do with thermal package rather than, you know, the GPU not being that much faster because the GPU is, if at maximum, up to 20% sort of faster than the 1050 Ti. But of course, this is an XPS 15, thin and light, you know, it's 17 millimeters, very thin. And um, if you want a gaming laptop, do not come here. This is not a gaming laptop. In saying that, I'm very happy with the gaming performance. Like it does what I need. It plays my games, 60 FPS, medium to high. That's all I ask for. So if you're gamer first, go get a gaming laptop. Now, if you don't know what the specs of this are, this model here is i7-9750H, 16 gigabytes RAM, dual channel, GTX 1650 with four gigabytes of RAM. Now I do have an i9 coming in. Steve from Owner Disowned asked, would it be worth getting the i9? Well, we'll soon see. Go check out his channel, especially if you want to see what the 1650 does. He has a few 1650 laptops that he's reviewed, but I will do another gaming review once the i9 comes in the house. I mean, the dead giveaway that something's a gaming laptop or not is does it have a high refresh rate monitor? No, these don't. But I can tell you now, without a doubt, the games have never looked better than they do on this OLED display. Anything that is properly color managed, because OLED can look weird when it's not in a color managed environment, like Windows is even weird sometimes with color management. But you look at something that is color managed properly. This OLED, the gaming experience for just visuals is just awesome. Like nothing I've looked at on a display in a laptop for gaming has looked better in terms of just pop, contrast. It just looks so nice. Now, of course, it's 60 hertz. So anyway, let's find out how these games. It games well. I'm happy with it. It's not 100% dialed in. They have to update the BIOS. And they have to, you know, mess around with power management. I love Dell for letting the horses run free, but trying to pump 56 watts into this while it's gaming, yeah. There are many full-on gaming laptops will buckle with 56 watts or 4 gigahertz on the CPU. Yeah, they need a BIOS where they control that wattage on the CPU and also not make it such a hard limit of 75 degrees on the GPU. So thanks to Bob of all trades for actually helping me out with the GPU temperature. This GPU is capable 85 degrees stock. This is limited to 75 degrees and it will hit that. CPU will go up to 100 degrees. The actual keyboard area, yeah, it gets warm, but nothing too bad. When it comes to gaming laptops, and this isn't a gaming laptop, but when it comes to performance laptops with graphics card, there's two versions, right? There's loud and friggin' loud. And this is in the loud category, right? So when it's under full low, it's actually quite pleasant compared to some gaming laptops, believe me. And it gets a little bit warm underneath, nothing too bad. So let's have a look at Cinebench just so we can work out what the thermals are doing here. And as you'll see that it is hard capped at 56 watts. Now that 56 watts gets carried over even if you undervolt. So on the left you have stock, on the right you have undervolted. Now even if I undervolted and raised the package limit up to 100 watts, it'll still settle down at 56 watts. It's baked in. Maybe with the i9 it won't be but we'll soon see now you're not going to be gaming at 56 watts so for gaming doesn't really matter but if you're rendering or something like this you're still going to hit that 56 watt limit and as you'll see on the left 56 watts equals 3 3.1 and as you'll see on the right, undervolted by minus 150 millivolts, 56 watts equals around 3.4, maybe 3.5. So it doesn't reduce the temperature at all. 
once the fans kick in, it's like 80 degrees when you've pegged that CPU, or in the 80s anyway, at that 56 watt limit. So other thermals change. I think it's just better performance per watt of the CPUs and GPUs. And that's what's given me the feeling that it is a bit faster or a bit better thermally. When really, it probably isn't. I will open it up later in future reviews because I'll show you how to upgrade this. So make sure you subscribe. You want to see stuff on this XPS 15, do sub up. But the one good thing is when you game, like the last XPS 15, the clock would go down to 1.8 gigahertz sometimes. It doesn't do that anymore. It stays like over three gigahertz, which is very surprising to me. And sometimes four gigahertz, which is just absolutely bonkers with this sort of chassis, this sort of thermal envelope of 130 watts. Something's got to give, right? So that's where the micro stutters were coming in and by the way there are a lot of gaming laptops that do the same thing but they will fix that with bios as bob of all trades said they will reduce the performance in the bios and yeah it, it needs it you're not going to be doing 56 watts with this gaming you're just not going to I mean, I've reviewed Razer Blade full-on gaming laptops where they capped it at 35 watts. How is this pushing 56 watts? It's just... What are you doing, Dell? You're going too hard, Dell. So anyway, they will fix that with BIOS. Now I'll show you how to fix it manually yourself. All right, so out of the box with the latest BIOS, it's a bit too ambitious. I was getting like slowdowns every now and then. So Dell have to really dial this in... Um, they need a new firmware or a new BIOS that, you know, controls the CPU a bit more and maybe even controls the GPU just because the power limit was reached, the temperature limit was reached and just that's because, you know, I love Dell for it, but they let the horses run free. But it's a little bit ambitious with this, you know, the thermal package of this and the power package, you know, it's not going to handle those sort of, um, you know, speeds of 4 gigahertz on the CPU and, you know, the GPU at 1600 and stuff like that. Even gaming laptops will struggle. So until they update the BIOS to stop slowdowns, if you do get them, this may be silicon dependent. I recommend you undervolt and you control the wattage. So what you do is download and install Intel XTU, restart. And once you do that, come in here. So you come in here and you go to all controls. You go to core, click on that, and we want to undervolt it. Now, this can do minus 150. It'll be silicon dependent. Start at 100, so we'll go to 150. I know this is good for 150, and this wattage here, we want to keep that down. 56 watts is just crazy for an XPS 15. Why are you gaming? I mean, that's just out of control. Um, let dial it down to about 25 watts. And then go up from there so you had no problems no stutters at 25 watts increase it slowly now we'll get more into undervolt when i get the i9 in if you want to know the effects of undervolting it just basically increases the clock speed make sure you stay till the end of the video because you will clearly see what undervolting does so here you have it here are the fps on the screen and i will tell you something i think the vega 20 is faster than a 1650 not only does it get a higher fire strike score if i look at the macbook pros you know benchmark compared to this xps 15 very competitive and sometimes beat it and you can imagine if you put that vega 20 in a 130 watt package it would be even faster so i think the vega 20 is faster than a 1650 so what i would say to manufacturers pc manufacturers come on I know NVIDIA's got you over a barrel, but come on, give us some Vega 20 love because that Vega 20 flies and in the PC, whoo. But at the end of the day, they're both pretty comparable. So the 1650 is good. It's a good upgrade over the 1050 Ti. If you're in a gaming laptop, you will get more of a benefit compared to the 1050 Ti. In this thermal package, the difference won't be so much. So they're the frames. So overall, my conclusion, yeah, it does everything I want. This is a powerhouse video editing content creation machine that games, okay? It gives me my medium high 60 FPS. All right, there are some exceptions to that, but some games, it was pushing well in excess of 60 frames per second. So I'm happy with it. They got to dial it in a bit with the BIOS, fix that, showed you how to do it yourself. Um, so we get rid of some of those micro stutters and make it a bit more linear, the stutter. You know, when it hits that 75 degrees on the CPU, not just fall off a cliff. We just want a bit, you know, smoother transition, which they will do with their bias. I'm 100% confident of that. If you're a gamer first, don't buy this. But if you want a powerhouse content creation, beautiful, great daily driver, 15-inch laptop that games as well, this is the one, right? So make sure you sub up. I've got a lot more videos on this XPS 15. I'll catch you in the next one, guys. Tally ho. All right, so we're playing PUBG. 
Stock settings, no undervolt. What are we getting? 99 degrees, all right. 50 watts, why is it all 50 watts? This isn't a gaming laptop, Dell. What are you doing? What are you doing, son? You shouldn't be going that hard. There's no way you should be going that hard. It's gonna end in tears, I'm telling you. Um, yeah, all right, it's dropped a little bit now, 3.7, but still, 80 frames per second. These are medium settings. Uh, PUBG, baby, 1080p, of course and still maintaining those clocks. What the? That's crazy. And now we drop, dip down to three gigahertz. Yep, I'd expect that. That's it, okay. So, maintaining four gigahertz for a while. Now we're dropping down to three gigahertz. This is what I'm talking about, all right. <laughs> I was getting a bit carried away with those frames there. That was like too crazy. That was like gaming laptop sort of frames. Or, and not only frames, gaming laptop sort of uh, frequency there with the CPU, 4 gigahertz, like that's crazy. Not even, a lot of gaming laptops, I'm telling you now, they don't even, um, well, they do maintain 3.5 probably, but three. this is very similar to a gaming laptop. Like, yeah, quite interesting, isn't it? It actually can game, and yeah, I think it might be just a combination of... Um, you know, better performance per watt, not generation CPUs and the um, new 1650 graphics. So maybe they haven't done anything with the cooling. I have to have a look, but certainly to maintain these sort of clocks, and this isn't even undervolted, is quite amazing. Uh, that's what I would expect a gaming uh, laptop to do, like a full on gaming laptop and one of those thin and lights, like, you know, the Aero or, you know, um, something like that even like um, the razor like the razor yeah it wouldn't be doing 45 watts the razor i can tell you now so this is performing very well i'm so surprised it's really good for gaming like you know and the games they never look better than it does on this oled all right you want a high refresh rate monitor if you're going to be playing first person shooters yeah all right we know that but you know, there are a lot of console gamers that game at 60 hertz, and they love it. And I'm telling you, on this OLED, you know, anything that's color managed looks oh, so stunning on this OLED. And OLEDs have fast response too. You've got to remember that. They've got fast response. This doesn't have the refresh rate, but it does. I don't know what the response rate is, but OLED does have a fast response. So um, the games haven't looked better. And the game performance on this is quite frankly, considering that this is stock and not even undervolted. Let's undervolt it, eh? 3.2, 32 watts. All right, so it was about 3.2. Let's undervolt it. All right, so you can see here, no funny buggers. Now the Agato does go a bit crazy when you... Um, Alt tab out so yeah you can see there's no funny bugs but there you can see power limit throttling thermal limit throttling that that's fine right it's not a gaming laptop um and even the gaming laptops do that so don't worry about that let's just go to a profile that i have minus 100 or oh, it's actually more than 100 it's minus 150 millivolts we'll apply that and we'll see what it was, it was about 3.2. Forget about the frames, because it's just gonna depend where you are in the game, but we were pushing, um, you know, under 40 watts, and it was like, now we're pushing, oh, I'm still alive, oh, I'm not gonna stay alive for much longer. Um, now we're pushing, what are we pushing? 32 watts, the temperature has dropped slightly, but now we're 3.9, okay, that's what you gotta watch, the clock. Now it's gone up to four gigahertz. 4 gigahertz now and it was at 3.2 when it wasn't undervolt undervolted now it's dropping down because yeah all right i've been playing i've been slamming this thing right now so it's like super hot now um and this is as bad as it's going to get and this is undervolted to get up to 4 gigahertz and that's the thing it's not going to reach 4 gigahertz it was sitting at about 3.2 before right it's going to back off every now and then because it's it's not a gaming laptop. The power limit and obviously the thermal limit. It's in this thin package. Yeah, that's what it is. But um, amazing performance. I I think you know, it's it's pretty good. Like, don't compare it to a gaming laptop, but 
I think in the thinner light package, to be able to push four gigahertz, um, yeah, all right, it's undervolted, and it will drop down as you just seen. Then it went down to two gigahertz, but I remember last time the XPS 15, it would drop to one, the you know the 9570, that would drop down to um, you know 1.8 sometimes, two gigahertz, and there's no way it was maintaining four gigahertz. So yeah, some improvements here, whether it's just the silicon or there actually is some thermal improvement, there are improvements, so yeah, happy days.